Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from Homesite and today we're going to be talking about Ubuntu and how to install Home Assistant on it and more importantly in a virtual machine. Let's go! So first things first, let's get Ubuntu downloaded. So we go to Google, we search for Ubuntu, we choose this one, we're going to go to desktop. We're just going to use the desktop one. KVM will run perfectly fine on there. So it's the Ubuntu 20.04. This is run. We're going to hit the download button. Now with the magic of video, that's going to instantly download. There we go. Now we've got that. Now we can donate to Ubuntu, but we won't do that right now. Next thing we're going to download is Rufus. Now Rufus will burn our ISO we've just downloaded onto a memory stick and make it bootable. Here we go. And download 3.11, fantastic. That's downloaded. So next thing, this is Rufus. So we choose our memory stick. We choose the ISO that we've just downloaded. So there we go. So that's downloaded Ubuntu into our downloads. We choose that one. Now we're gonna hit start. We'll get a couple of messages. First one, would you like to download this thing? Yeah, sure I will. If you press no, it won't work. Okay, next one, do we want to do it in recommended mode? Yeah, of course we do. Then final warning, this is going to wipe your drive. Make sure you've copied anything off it first. At this point, I'm going to make my first assumption. I'm going to assume that you know how to get your device to boot off of the USB. Typically, you've got to go into BIOS, hit F10 or delete or F2 to, to um, interrupt the startup process. And you'll have to, you might have to change the BIOS order. Sometimes it will just work for you, but you might have to Google that one as well if you're not sure. So next, we get the option to try Ubuntu or install it. I'm going to go straight for the install. I'm going to choose a UK keyboard because I'm in the UK. I'm going to do a normal installation. No, I'm not. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do a minimal installation without some of the bells and whistles. Now I'm going to choose Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu. I'm not bothered about what's on the hard drive, so I'm going to do a full install over the top of everything that's there. This is just a confirmation. You're going to overwrite everything on the disk. I'm going to choose London because that's near to where I am. Enter my name, Simon, computer name, Ubuntu host, choose a username, choose a password, and I'm going to hit continue there. Now, again, with the magic of video, this is going to install super fast. Here we go, and we're done. So hit, we can hit restart now. And there we go, we're booting into Ubuntu. Fantastic. And we're going to hit next and get rid of some of this nonsense at the beginning. Cool, we're ready to go. Great, so now we can get started with loading Home Assistant. So before we do that, we need to install Virtual Manager. If we look, click down here in the bottom left, you'll see these applications and Virtual Manager is not installed or KVM. So I'm going to install this from the terminal. So if you open up terminal, and type in this command, sudo apt-get install vert-manager. It'll ask for your password, just to make sure this is what you want to do. Now I've got an issue. I need to update my repositories first. So first, so type this command here, and it will go off and update all of them for you. Now we can type that command again to install Virtual Manager. Here we go. And this is going to run off and tell you all of the bits you're going to install. If you hit Y and enter, it's going to go off and do it for you. It's all very clever, isn't it? Right, let's get Home Assistant downloaded. So that's finished. So we're going to go to Home Assistant. We're going to go to Getting Started and scroll down. Now all of this lovely information about how to install on a Pi, however we're installing onto some other device. So we're going to click on your device here and we're going to ignore the Pi stuff and download the QCAL2 file. Now this is the native file that KVM uses. We're going to save this. 
There we go, you can see it's downloaded into our downloads. So from here, if we go into our folder browsers, we can create a new folder. I'm going to call it VMs. We're going to download and find our QCAL2 file. Now currently it's in a .gz, which is like a zipped compressed file. We're going to go back to home, into there, paste it in there, right click, and I'm going to extract here. Here we go, extract here. Great. So now, once that's completed, which it has, there you go. I'm going to come down into applications, click on my virtual machine manager, click on new. I'm going to import an existing disk image and forward. Browse to the storage path. Now we're going to have to add a new pool because we've added that extra VM folder, so if you click the little plus, browse to this VMs folder, you can change the name, I haven't, if you refresh, oops, if I go to the right pool, which is pool 1, and refresh, you can see there's a couple of things in there now, the QCAL2, not the raw file, which is our compressed file still. So I'm going to choose that volume, and you need to tell it what operating system you need to run. Now in this case it's going to be generic default and forward. Choose the amount of RAM you want to give it depending on how much you've got in your system. I'm going to go for 2 meg. You can always change this later. Give it a name, home assistant, except I'm going to customize it but I'm going to take the space out because you can't have spaces in the name and finish. One last change, if you down, go down to here, the firmware bottom, you have to change it to EUFI, and we hit apply. And now we can begin our installation, which is pretty cool. So this is going to start loading HAS or Home Assistant onto the virtual machine. Now I've sped this up a bit as well, so it normally takes a little bit longer than this. Oh, there's one failure there, don't worry about that one, that one's okay. Amazing, we've done it. So now if we type in root at this command line, it'll take us into the shell, basically. So we can type in a few things here, network info. Now this is going to tell us two key bits of information, the gateway and the IP address. So you'll probably want to make a note of these. Now there's another way of seeing the IP address. If we go to details, or view and details, you can go to this NIC, which is a network interface card, and it should show you the IP address there. So I'm going to copy that, and you'll see that's the same IP address, which is good. Now then, if we go to our Firefox, or our web browser, this is from the virtual machine, and we put in that IP address with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, that IP address, colon 8123, which is the Home Assistant port, we've done it. We, it's now preparing Home Assistant for installation. It might take up to 20 minutes, it says, but typically it takes a bit faster than that. Now, before we carry on, if you were to try this from any other machine in the network, it's not going to work. Now, that's down to the way that KVM do their networking. They use something called NAT. Now, you'll notice that the IP address range, that 192.168.122.242, that address, it probably isn't in the same range as the rest of your network. Now, this means that you can keep Home Assistant totally separate in this virtual machine and only pass it the traffic that you want, which is really good because it stops it getting caught in any other network traffic, it stops any speed problems, but it does mean there is a few extra steps. So you have to forward the port, and that's why we've, we've written down that gateway as well. We have to forward the right port from our gateway over into the virtual machine that we want it to go to. But don't worry, I'll take you through it now. So the first thing we're going to do is jump into Windows, and we'll have a little look. We'll make sure that we can't get to it at the moment, as we expect. So that's errored, so, which is what we expected. So back to Ubuntu, we get rid of this Firefox Windows for a second. 
Now I'm going to open up another terminal window. Just by right clicking on the desktop, clicking open terminal, we'll make that a little bit bigger. Now, there's some fairly lengthy commands here. First of all, we're going to do IF config. It's a bit like IP config. It tells us the interfaces we've got on the machine and it'll tell us the names of them most importantly, along with those IP addresses. So you can see our gateway here is that 122.2. .2. Now we're going to type in this command here, IP tables, hyphen capital I, forward, hyphen O, VIR, BR0, hyphen D, uh, the IP address of our Home Assistant virtual machine, hyphen J, accept. Well, we're using this virtual machine interface name. This is the IP address of our Home Assistant. But all of these commands will be in the description as well. Cool, so that's that one done. We put in our pseudo password. We're gonna type this one, this is the last one. So this is forwarding. Now I'm gonna forward port 80, which is the standard web port, to the virtual machine address 8123. So we don't have to put that colon 8123 at the end of our address anymore. And that's done as well. See, told you it wasn't that hard. Let's just check that we can still get to it from Ubuntu. Looks good. And final check, let's see if we can get that in Windows. So we're gonna enter our IP for our NATed address. We're gonna get rid of the colon and the 8123 at the end. And there we go. Done it. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. And I hope you managed to get Home Assistant working on KVM within Ubuntu. Now, there's one thing I realized it didn't explain particularly well, which was the networking side of this, because it can get a little confusing if you're new to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through it really quick. So if you're all finished and you're working, brilliant, thanks very much. Feel free to like my page. Please subscribe as well to get any new videos. Feeling that, so please stay on and, and just learn a little bit more about the networking side of it. So. The picture you can see now is starting on the very left hand side, you've got the internet, we didn't talk about that, we've got our my normal home router with a wireless point in it as well. Now this acts as a router, a wireless access point and a switch, but we don't need to worry about that one. Where we're looking here is our Ubuntu laptop that we loaded today. Now we've also got this Windows machine here, that's the one I'm using to record this video right now, and the one that I used to do the testing on from the Windows machine. Now, critically, we can see this 192.168.1.142. Because this end bit, this 142 and the 100, they're in the same range. Now, you remember that IP address for our Home Assistant is 192.168.122.242. But that's within the virtual machine. So from our Ubuntu machine, we could get to that one. But from our Windows machine, we couldn't. So we are now using this from our Windows machine, 192.168.1.142 address. Now, how is that working? The way it does it is the traffic will flow from our Windows machine up to our Ubuntu machine. Now, because we've set up that rule, remember that IP tables command? Now that's natting. Now that's doing something called network address translation. And what this is doing is it's using this sort of virtual router within KVM itself. And it's doing that translation between the two networks. So you can see because this one here has got 122 in this sort of third, what they call it, octet, this third octet, it means it's in a different range to this one. So I can't talk to it directly. I have to go through this, this virtual router. Now that's the clever bit within KVM that keeps the home assistant away from hacking and anything else. It's only opening up that port. So you remember we did that IP tables command where we had port 80 and we had port eight um, and forwarded that to, to this address here, 192.168.122.242 colon 8123. So we're passing any network traffic from this machine here with our normal web browser up to this one. Anything hitting port 80 on this machine is gonna be forwarded automatically through there. It's like there's a little firewall. It's not quite a firewall, it's actually a router, um, but it's, um, it's all very clever. But if you want any more information on it, give me a shout in the comment section and I'll be sure to come back to you. Make sure you subscribe and watch my next video and I'm always looking forward for comments so I can uh, give you the feedback that you need. Thanks guys.